Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through my luxury wish list for 2021. As you know, the theme of my channel is buy better, buy less. So the emphasis will very much be on brands that are very high quality, but operate very much under the radar. I'm Aniswi Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid lux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still heavily weighted on quality. <laughs> I have seven items on my luxury wish list, and these are items that I'd like to buy and start using straight away and all the time. As I mentioned before, the theme of my channel is very much buy better, buy less. It's what I always say, will always say with all my recommendations, but I also actively practice that. So when I buy something, I will typically say for weeks, months, maybe years, and then when I have it, I use it to death. And then I either stop using it or slow down because I'm just a little bored and not because the quality performance has gone down. If anything, it, it looks just as amazing, but I just want something different and I'll, I'll keep something uh, for later for another time uh, when I miss it or give it away. But I'm quality all the way. So all the items that I want to buy, I'm going to use to death and enjoy being in my 40s, I feel I'm at that point in my life now where it's more towards the end. Um, I may not have another 40 years, but the next 40 years I really want to enjoy and make sure what I have is fantastic. So the first item on my wish list is jewellery. I wear very simple, very classic, dainty, more on the delicate looking side of jewellery because I feel it's classier, but also because I'm petite in size, I feel it works better with my frame and also just my style. I wear a lot of either gold or silver studs, so I have my studs in all the colours, in all the sizes rather. So small, medium and large and then maybe a pair of pearls, but I wear those to death, rotate them all the time. And I want to now upgrade to diamonds, so silver, gold and now diamonds and I would like matching pieces so earrings pendant and a bracelet all three matching and I'll incorporate them into my core collection so I use them all the time and they won't be for special occasions or when I'm doing xyz every day whenever I wake up depending on what I'm wearing the look and feel I'm going for the diamonds are part of the selection for the day and I would like to go for a range from Tiffany's my studs, so the gold and silver, the earrings, the bracelets, most of them, 90% of my stuff is from Tiffany's. It's the entry level sterling silver. And it's a range that I will never hesitate to recommend. I've had the best experiences. I All of my pieces are either 10 or 15 years um, of age and still going strong. It was only last year I sent everything back to Tiffany's to get professionally uh, polished. And they changed a couple of the earring butterflies. But other than that, it came back looking as good as new. I'm happy with it. And even when I sent it, none of it was bent or warped or anything. I just wanted it looking um, a little sparklier. I'm going to go for another entry level range focused on their diamonds. It's a collaboration with Alsa Peretti and it's the Diamonds by the Yard. Um, they look fantastic based on my experience. I know I'm getting a quality product and I want to go for earrings, the round earrings, um, a matching pendant and bracelet. And I'm going to go for the platinum as opposed to the yellow gold. Yellow gold, I think I will wait until I'm ready to buy better quality diamonds when I'm a little more um, conversant and I know the deal with diamonds and I I know maybe try something else and I know exactly what it is that I want to try then I'll go maybe for yellow gold but in this instance I'm going to go for the platinum because of the color and also platinum is a lot more durable than yellow gold uh, the price is a big decide as I said my entry level but the quality of Tiffany's and the entry level the Elsa Peretta Peretti I'm really happy with and I'm going to go for um, the round earrings so the color the clarity the cut for the price I'm paying it's a great price earrings are around 1000 pounds just a little over a thousand pounds and then the matching pendant and also bracelet 
are going to be around 800 pounds each uh, but it's a fairly good quality relative least speaking it's a good quality diamond um, when I'm ready to upgrade as I mentioned uh, where I'm going to go maybe for yellow maybe a more claw cut then I will go to an independent um, diamond dealer and I know quite a few people um, on, in Hatton Gardens which is a major the major diamond district in the United Kingdom and in particular in London but for my first my initial foray into diamonds I'm going to go for Elsa Peretti and um, the matching pieces so I'm looking at about just um, just under three thousand pounds and it's something that I'm going to wear forever and I potentially may pass on later when I've upgraded or still keep and wear alongside but it's a, a, a selection I'm really excited about because when I look at the price I'm paying the quality the brand I'm very happy my second item is a brand I mentioned recently in uh, my handbag video, which I'm going to attach above. It's a German brand called Jill Sander. And as I said, Jill Sander is two things, quality and minimalism in everything they produce from their clothes to their shoes to their handbags. It's all about the little details that really make the difference and make the pieces stand out. I would like to invest in two of their seven days shirts. They have two ranges of shirts. They have the seven days shirts, which is white shirts, one shirt for each day of the week, different designs. And then they have the seven evenings shirts. So it's one black shirt for every day of the week. I'm not a huge fan of black. I try and move away from black but I really like white shirts. There's nothing that beats a crisp white shirt. And from Jill Sander, you are paying money for the quality, for the construction, so how it's made, how it fits, how it looks, the quality of the cotton they use, how soft it is, how durable and also breathable it is. You're paying for the prestige of Jill Sander, the, the brand itself. I mean, that's all priced into the premium they're charging for this shirt. And it's a shirt that I will use forever. Uh, it'll get dry cleaned. Um, it's a shirt that will be part of my rotation. I actually like two or three of their shirts. I'm still trying to decide. they are two I definitely like. I'm thinking about the third. The first one, which I like, but it's my third option, is the Monday shirt. Nothing beats just a, a, a clean, crisp white shirt. The two I particularly like, my main one is the Thursday shirt. I like the fact that it's short on the body. I like the cuff um, at the bottom, the big thick cuff. But I also like the Sunday shirt because it's an oversized shirt. And with my petite frame, I would wear it more as um, a shirt dress. I don't have a white shirt dress and it's something I've wanted to buy for many years, but I've just never found the right one. I like this one because of the quality, the fit, the cut that it potentially will be. And then I would wear it with a belt and either dress it up with heels or dress it down with just thong sandals and a handbag, a nice lazy Sunday uh, lunch outfit or dress it up with heels just to meet some girlfriends for lunch, whichever way. But I like the Thursday and the Sunday shirt and I could consider the Monday one, but it's all down to the price. Um, saving for it, finding a website where maybe it's on promotion, bring the price down. My third item is a brand I also mentioned in the same video I mentioned, Jill Sander. It's Loewe, and in particular, their puzzle bag. The puzzle bag is a bag that's very much under the radar. Loewe, period, is very much under the radar. They are Spain's most distinguished luxury brand, but you wouldn't think it because you hardly see or hear of them anywhere. But what you see more of, if you ever hear of them, is their puzzle bag. And Loewe, as a brand, are well-known um, best known for their handbags but they produce a whole range of other products and I like the puzzle bag for a number of reasons the style itself I just like the different style I like the fact that you can carry it in five different ways either top handle you can have it just under your arm you can have it uh, with the uh, detachable uh, adjustable strap and either crossbody over the shoulder or you can have it uh, on across your back as a backpack I just like the different style. You don't get that many handbags like that and you can dress it up or you can dress it down. I also like the fact that it comes in a whole range of typically vibrant colors. It's very well made, you have different sizes, but I'd be more inclined to go for the medium size. But this is a bag that's on my radar. What I'm just umming and ahhing about for this year is the color because I'm only gonna buy one and it's a bag and color that I want to work in both a professional and social context. 
My fourth item is lingerie. I'm going to talk about lingerie during the course of this year, but I will talk about different brands in context. So whether it's a brand that's great for the fuller bust or the smaller bust, there'll always be a theme to it. But there's a brand that works fantastically well for me. It's a brand, a British brand called Catherine Hamilton. And what I really like about Catherine Hamilton is they're focused on luxury lingerie, specifically for people with small bags and with the fuller uh, bust. They start from 26 uh, for their backs and go up to 38. And then their cup sizes are from D through to double H. And I really like this brand because they've plugged a gap that previously wasn't being serviced. I only started noticing them in the last maybe four, three to four years. But before that, um, as somebody with a small back, I'm a 28. I would just have to wear 30. And what I always struggled with was the fact that wearing a 30 back bra it meant even when it's on the first hole it's not as tight as it potentially should be or could be and by the time the bra had stretched and you got to moving to the second or the third the tightest it still wasn't as tight as I would have preferred it to be but they've come in and filled this gap and they're offering a luxury product I like the styles they're wearable um, the materials robust they range from using silk through to French lace so you have really pretty very delicate feminine fun bras and then you have also very functional but maybe a little more simple or, or a little more uh, lace detail but the bras are very well made I like the colors I like the range I like the versatility and I'm going to talk a lot more about them so Catherine Hamilton great brand for your small back fuller bust and I'm going to be investing in more pieces I currently have two sets and I want to try and double up on the two sets that I have so the first set is the range is called Sophie and then just get something another color they're great for your everyday um, bras and then I'm going to go for another range called I think it's Ariel and that's your more delicate your more dainty but still very well made it's still robust even though it has the lace detail it is robust but more special occasions or when I just want something that just makes me feel a little special and I, I feel in the mood for something a little a little sexy, a little more fun, a little more playful. So Catherine Hamilton is a brand I'm going to be investing heavily in um, this year. They are a little pricey, but I have bought their pieces on sale. They do great uh, Black Friday sales as well and um, their normal uh, seasonal sales, either end of summer or um, end of the Christmas period. My next product is a brand I first mentioned in my Christmas gift ideas uh, video where I mentioned an Argentinian luxury niche brand called Froegia. I'm going to attach the video above and I like Froegia for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's in luxury niche. Luxury niche is a growing sector within luxury perfume. They're very much focused on creating niche fragrances that are unique in terms of the scent so they don't smell like uh, a lot of the fragrances in the market and they're typically made from very high quality oils and um, synthetic products but Froegia I like because they're very much focused on sustainable fragrance production they use very very high quality natural ingredients and because you don't get large quantities of the natural ingredients you t they typically make very small batches very small runs and every single bottle is numbered with the year it was produced in and the batch number that it is because they don't make a lot and it's almost um the limit you're buying into the limited edition the exclusivity is is what you're paying for and what you're buying into but also the quality of the ingredients that they use and what you get with your luxury niche is perfumes that are made with very very high quality products so with for gear it's the natural products but with other brands like for example frederick mal and killian that are a little better known it would be very high quality oils and synthetic products and what you ultimately end up with is a fragrance that is unique but also a, a fragrance a scent that's highly refined and very specific in terms of what the the scent is and that's what you're buying into the exclusivity of the the fragrance and how refined and specific the smell of the perfume is and the one i particularly like and will be buying from Foygia is the jacaranda they use only natural products so it's going to be uh, fragrances that are either um, woody flowers plants um, tobacco so think of natural things you can make fragrances from and the one i like is the jacaranda i like the jacaranda 
because of the smell but more so the nostalgia as well um it brings back the memories from my um upbringing my childhood i grew up in zimbabwe and i remember the jacaranda trees when they'd be in bloom in the summer and the glorious sight you'd get coupled with just the most heavenly scent it was amazing so i'm going to be investing in the jacaranda uh fragrance from foy gear their fragrances are priced between 200 and 400 pounds depending on the ingredients that go into the perfume my next luxury item is a pair of shoes from Francesco Russo. Francesco Russo is an eponymously named brand. Francesco himself is Italian born and he's based in Paris. Francesco Russo, apart from a pair of his shoes, I've got a couple of pairs of shoes on my radar this season. I'm still deciding which of the two, but I'm buying one of these two pairs of shoes. But his story is just amazing he started um he's, he's he has a, he has about 20 years experience behind him he's worked for Yves Saint Laurent he's worked for National Costume Miu Miu but from 2008 to 2013 he worked for Sergio Rossi as the creative director then he did a year um, after that 2014-2015 at Dior but in between that in 2013 he then created his own eponymous brand and the fact that he did five years at Sergio Rossi to me sealed the deal. Sergio Rossi is the father of Gian Vito Rossi. I mentioned Gian Vito Rossi in a video where I talked about some of the most comfortable and well-made designer shoes in the in the market. I'm going to attach that video above. And the two brands that very confidently lead the pack are Manola Blahnik and Gian Vito Rossi. When it comes to exquisite craftsmanship and ex and amazing um, uh, quality in terms of the materials used you can't beat Manola and Gian Vito they are amazing the styles are different but my goodness they're amazing and for a very high-heeled pair of shoes Gian Vito's are the most comfortable you will find in the industry so the fact that Francesco is coming from that pedigree of working with Sergio Rossi being around greatness to me was a done deal. When he started his own eponymous brand, I knew I was onto a winner. It was just a matter of time when I'd invest in a pair of shoes. But I'm gonna talk about Francesco Russo a lot in the coming years because he is amazing in terms of just the style, upbeat elegance, his shoes are ultra feminine, but there's a quirkiness to them. So they have the raised backs. I love that. They are beautiful, they're very comfortable, they're well made, the colors are vibrant. And I invested in my first pair uh, this last summer, literally stumbled across the shoes I'd been l literally eyeing for the last two years. On a website, they were a quarter of the full price and I snapped them up straight away. They were the caged sandals. This summer, I'd like to invest in um, the, the Thai sandals. I think they're gladiator sandals. That's the, the common name for them. But these are heeled shoes, high heeled with the ties around them. They're just so beautiful you can vary the ties either have them um just a quarter of the way up your your ankle or all the way up your calf whatever you want to do but they're comfortable they're going to be well made the colors i can't wait to see even though i he has them in the chocolate brown they look amazing i just can't wait to buy these shoes when they come out but francesco russo i don't have shares in the business but i know a good designer when i see a good designer I've literally saved the best for last. The last thing I want to buy this year, I won't technically be buying it, but I'll be going on the waiting list for it. It's a watch from a brand I first mentioned in my video where I talked about the brands loved by the rich. I'm going to attach that video above. It's a brand called Patek Philippe. And Patek Philippe is not the most expensive watch brand in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but they are arguably the most respected when it comes to the quality of the construction, so not just the outward material, the stainless steel or the gold they use, the fastenings, but the actual complication, the watch mechanism, throw into that equation the prestige associated with the brand, the exclusivity, the um, heritage of the brand. The brand is very much focused on their history. They really um, push it and they know everything there is to know about their watches. They provide provenance. They're really proud of their brand and rightly so. And I love this brand. It's the watch I aspire to. I've aspired to for many years, but 
I'm now at that point where I'm, I have to bite the bullet. It's waitlisted. So it's not as if I can walk into a Patek Philippe dealer or one of their stores and just buy the watch. There's a waiting list of, of between three to five years. So this year I'm going to commit to the waiting list and then wait for a call three or five years later, at which point I, I hope I will have earned the watch. I'll have worked hard enough and can afford it. But I love the aesthetic of it, just the look, the fact that it's an angular round. I like how robust it is. I like the fact that it's it's very classy looking. It's very tasteful in the way it it all comes together. When you look at the steel, it's not too masculine. The particular range I like is the Nautilus and the 7118, which is specifically the female version of the watch of the 5718 which is the male version 40 millimeters across but the lady version ladies version is 35 millimeters and that's the 7118 and that's the watch i'd like to commit to in stainless steel with the white um face and then maybe for my 50th my 60th um uh, the rose gold with the diamond bezel you know put it out there and it, it may just happen but if there's one watch and I'm only going to wear one watch, it's going to be the Patek. Um, I'll have worked hard, I'll have earned it, but I'm going on that waiting list today and putting it on, in, putting it out in the universe that uh, the Nautilus uh, 7118 is going to be on my wrist in the next three to five years. But um, I've given you, I think, a fairly different range of brands to your typical wish lists. These are brands that I'm fanatical about uh, in terms of the quality, um, the heritage uh, behind the brand. They're amazing. And I've enjoyed using some of them and I'm merely upgrading to a, a better brand, to a better range. But I'm excited. I'd love to hear what um, is on your lists uh, for 2021. Do let me know in the comments down below. But thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.